if you're interested in a gaming laptop, this is specifically if you're in really interested in a gaming laptop in late 2017, you probably should be looking for something with a 7820HK or at least a 6820HK because otherwise your CPU is going to be highly outdated within the next few months. At least if you get the 7820HK, even though it's a 4-core 8-thread chip, you're pretty much getting a computer that will last you a few years. Whereas if you get the 77HQ, you're, you're getting mostly a laptop quality CPU, it'll last you a few more years, but you're going to notice some some slowdown, especially for games. It's gonna be bad. You're probably going to see at most. <clears throat> you're going to see at most uh, some decent frame rates for now, but come next year, you're probably gonna see that your computer is kind of useless, especially depending on the graphics card you have in, in it. This is the other thing that you should be considering. You should also be considering at least a 1070. This is in late 2017 I'm referring to. Because come, I think, in the next six months, your computer may be completely outdated. Especially a laptop with a 1060. 1060 is the best deal that you can get at the moment. And it is probably the best dollars to performance you can get at the moment. But we're talking about six months from now. If you're going to keep this long term, you're probably going to start noticing some uh, downgrades all, all, all over the place. You're going to have to lower your settings to like medium. And then even by next year, it'll be at low uh, in some games. And then by the by 2019, it'll be you have to put everything in low and then some games aren't even playable. If that's what you want, then go ahead and get yourself a 1060. But I don't recommend it. Uh, even in with an external um, GPU connected to your laptop, you're still going to face some problems because of that that CPU. Whereas with your 7820HK, at least you're getting somewhat 7700K style performance. Not exactly, but you can get close to it. And then some people have actually gotten to that level, especially with this when compared to the 7700K. And that's decent chip, and it will be chip for the next few years. It will be the best chip out there, and it won't. Your will be outdated by the time that, by by the I think by the end of three years from now, it, it'll probably not even be good for some games, because we're moving to a different kind of architecture with more cores nowadays, and since CPUs are more gearing towards more multiple cores, and we have also game consoles with, I believe, eight cores at the same time, you're probably going to have problems playing games without those multiple cores in the near future and because of this i don't usually recommend people go out and buy a gaming laptop or even a a, a gaming desktop at this current moment in 2017 because we're really at that turning point we're, we're probably gonna see volta or whatever comes um after the after pascal soon and it'll probably dominate and it might not exactly dominate because there's rumors that it's going to be just an incremental upgrade but it'll still beat out anything that's out in the market at the moment and when we're looking at this change within six months time if you have a 1060 and a 7700 hq laptop you're going to start noticing some slowdowns you're not going to get the best performance you're going to be back with your 980m type style computer where it was like half the performance of a of a regular 980 in this desktop right now gpus are only 10 percent slower than their desktop counterparts if you want to get the best pc at the market for late 2017 you find a deal in on black friday for a 7820 hk or a 6820 hk CPU in that laptop with at least a 1070 it has to at least have a 1070 because if you don't I, I've heard people say that you don't need more than a 1060 Yes in 2017 you do not need more than a 1060 But what about next year next year is where the big problems are gonna start showing Your 1070 laptop will basically be the equivalent of 1050 Ti nowadays I would say come t sometime next year you'll be glad that you have that as opposed to having, say, a 1030 <laughs> uh, in your GPU or GPU laptop or a 980M come next year. It'll, it'll, be, it'll decrease in performance, yes, because something that out there will be better. But at least you can play games at decent settings 
next year. And that's why I'm trying to tell people to, to try to avoid something lower. Some people will tell you, yeah, for price and performance, and if you're rich, you should go with a 1070 and stuff like that. But you really should consider going with a 1070 out, in my opinion. And you shouldn't pay more than, I say, $1,300 for this computer. That is where you have to look for it. If you're spending more than $1,300, you're pretty much getting a really, really bad deal in late 2017. I don't think that computer would be worth more than that. And how do you get that kind of deal? Well, I know laptops cost more than that. And I know people I what I'm saying to be above $1,500. But the reality of it is that it isn't. If you look around there multiple times this year, there's been deals around that price range. And if you look online right now, and if you go to places like the Dell outlet, you may find an Alienware for that price. I recently found an Alienware on their certified refurbished. Yeah, it's refurbished, but it, it was on there for $1,300. Another thing about refurbished computers I need to talk about, most computers that you get are do not, especially when you buy from some boutique, there is no way to know that they're actually all new parts. In fact, I'm pretty willing to bet that some of those parts are can, would be considered refurbished parts that are just put back into your computer and sold to you the reason this happens is because most of those parts are still tested i mean they're they're tested they're put through a bunch of tests they're they're basically used already when you get them new there's not they're not just made right there and they're made for you and they're packaged and no one ever touches them because that would just be crazy so most of these things are usually tested out see if they work and most certified refurbished computers aren't used computers that someone used for a whole year sent back and didn't use it and some of the times they're not even sent back but some of the times when they are sent back they're usually sent back right away because they have some sort of problem in them and that problem usually gets fixed or the computer gets torn apart and then those parts are just reused for another computer i would say some of those parts are reused for even new computers so the, the idea that the computer is certified refurbished doesn't mean much. This isn't like a game console that you're buying. You're buying something that is pre-packaged, yes, in a factory. But the refurbished parts are usually repackaged as well. They're not, it's really rare when someone opens it up and repairs it and just sends it out to you. That's not usually how that works with, with these kinds of things. These things usually go back to whatever factory they were manufactured in. They're replaced or, or fixed in a certain way, and then they're just shit right back out. Like, it's not that big of a deal. If you get something that's certified refurbished, though, you have to you have to check the computer. That's the only disadvantage. You have to check and make sure that there is no problem to it. Most of the time, there's not. Most of the time, some of these certified refurbished computers are brand new computers that were just overstocked and they, they just couldn't sell, so they're just selling them right back to you. Or they have some sort of defect that's cosmetic or something that you can barely tell um, and then they're just sending it to you. But most of the times as well, like you may get some heating issues and other things. So this is the thing that you have to look into. Even with brand new computers, when you buy them off the, say the Dell outlet, you have to investigate that computer because it may have some either heating problem or something else. At least with the certified refurbished computer, if it did have a problem, someone already looked into it and, and fixed it before trying to sell it. However, you cannot always assume that the problem was completely fixed. Yes, some people will tell you that you're risking something buying a certified refurbished computer because it may have a problem and it will creep up on you and it will destroy the computer. This to some level is nonsense because all computers have the risk of that same problem. It doesn't matter which computer you buy, whether it's certified refurbished or not. Sometimes when they're certified refurbished, it's just someone bought it, didn't want the computer when they got it because they didn't like the performance of it because it's a laptop or something, they were expecting something else, and they send it back. Sometimes, like I said, they're brand new computers that just get, for some reason, thrown into the certified refurbished lane. Personally, based on the price, I'd rather pay a whole $1,300 less or half the price of what I would have paid just to get uh, to get a certified refurbished computer over getting it brand new because these things already drop in value the second that you get them so i don't see the big deal like computer unless you wanted the the box and you want that experience having the box then you want to pay one thousand three hundred dollars for an extra box then go ahead and buy it brand new and then also 
you know, you'll get that secure feeling at least that you, you, you're the only one to touch it. In reality, you aren't. So go ahead and do that that way. But personally, I wouldn't see much of a big difference, especially for the price. The price is what you have to consider. Like the price for the most part, it's better off buying that certified refurbished computer, in my opinion. And even then, sometimes you can even find computers on the Dell outlet that are advertised as brand new. And if they are, they're supposed to be brand new. Go ahead and buy that if you see it for a de uh, decent deal. But again, I would say the price for that should be around one thousand three hundred something dollars because if it's more than that, you're overpaying for it. Again, this is a seventy-eight twenty HK computer, sixteen gigabytes of RAM with a one terabyte hard drive, a two hundred fifty-six at least two hundred fifty-six, or I mean at least one hundred twenty-eight um, gigabyte SSD drive and it basically comes all packed like with 16 gigabytes of RAM as well. This is the perfect buy at $1,300. You're not going to regret that necessarily right away. This is almost desktop price. Since it, some desktops, even with a 7700K with a 1070 in it right now, will cost you around $1,200, uh, give or take in some places. But I wouldn't be necessarily buying that if I had a choice. If you have a choice, I would still say you should probably maybe wait. Because you may want to get yourself a, a 8700K computer, or at least something with 6 cores and 12 threads, especially for a laptop, since you can't upgrade that CPU anymore. There was a time when you could lift that out and change it and replace it. Not anymore. Nowadays, that thing is there for life. It's soldered to the motherboard. When you buy this type of computer, you don't. You just want to make sure that you get everything that's worth it for now, especially if you're considering the future of it. This doesn't matter if you're going to buy a computer now and you're going to replace it in a year's time. You're going to buy another one next Black Friday. I would recommend the 1060 and then just save your money. Just don't pay more than like $900 and you'll be fine. But since I'm telling people whether or not they should buy a computer that they're going to use for several years, this is the one I would recommend. Something around the 1300 range, not much more than that. 7820HK, 1 terabyte hard drive, one at least a one some SSD of some sort, and then 16 gig, gigabytes of RAM for that price. This is You can find this, literally you can find this at the Dell outlet right now. At least before I finish recording this video, you can find it. It's there, and it's a decent deal. At the same time, just be aware this computer is going to last you a bit, but it might not last you as much as, say, if you had bought the same computer last year, or you bought the 6820HK last year, or a year before that. The 6820HK computer with a 1070 would have lasted you probably five years before it's obsolete, whereas this one's going to be obsolete at most. At the longest would be three years, I would say. And that's the most that you're going to get from it, simply because you're going only with a four-core CPU computer. And although it's decent speeds, it's not up to par with, say, your desktop version of that CPU as well. So you're pretty much going to be out outdated really fast. But at the same time, it's still a decent idea to consider because three years is a long time. You may have some fun with it. Just realize that the graphics card on it will probably become outdated faster too sometime next year. But at the same time, this is decent price. You can't really ask for more. This is a decent desktop replacement. This is probably your best buy. Granted, if you want to buy a brand new computer, you probably want to look at a different brand. However, the thing with Alienware is because it's made out of metal, it's made in such a way, it's kind of tough computer. And I usually try to tend to recommend them since you can also resell them for more than you could sell something like an Asus or something else. Some people try to resell Asus for tons of money and then it's really hard to sell that. It really is. The branding really matters to people. And the reason I tell people to buy Alienware mostly is because they can resell it. And also because of the build quality is pretty decent most of the time. Yes, if you're really nitpicky, um, this isn't the computer for you. The build quality can be sometimes suspicious. Like you're going to get some, some things wrong with the screen usually, or so you'll get something wrong somewhere else. And this is the reason you hear so many complaints because people 
pay so much for these computers, sometimes $3,000, and they expect almost perfection from it. And I can understand that completely. But just realize one thing. When you buy these things, you're not really paying that much extra for them, com considering the cost and considering all the things they have to pack into that thing. The one problem with it is there are certain design defects on them, considering the heat isn't as great as, I mean, as it could be, like, it could be way better cooling in that system. However, it would take a whole redesign and it could ruin the brand. So I think they considered more the branding of it and how it looked versus whether or not they can make it superior cooling and everything else. This is also a problem that Apple has. So it's not something that's just unique to this type of computer. But just realize that people complain. People, when it comes to computers, people nitpick about everything simply because they, they think since they're buying something that's so pricey that they deserve much more but what people i in my opinion don't seem to understand is yeah if you're buying say um food and it costs you like you can buy a hamburger that's like five dollars but if you buy a hamburger that's one thousand dollars i say then yeah you can nitpick because the, the hamburger itself wouldn't necessarily cost a thousand dollars unless it has something specific to it whereas the computer you're basically paying the price that I mean, you're trying to pay the cheapest price for most of the parts, and that's going to be really hard to get necessarily a benefit. It's like say buying a house and you're expecting to pay a house some some place in the I don't know in the Hamptons for like twenty thousand dollars, and that's all you want to pay, and then you get it, and then you come you try to nitpick about everything, and that's what happens with a lot of these things. People don't understand that they're pretty much not trying to pay. They're paying the least they can pay, even though it's a lot of money. Like $20,000 is a lot of money. It might not be a lot of money in the Hamptons, but it's a lot of money. So when you pay less, especially when you pay less for a computer, you should probably not expect it to be almost 100% perfection. But a lot of people do, and this is why you hear so many complaints about computer companies. Dell is one of those that has tons of complaints. The other ones like CyberPower PC has a tons of complaints. Every computer company tends to have really bad complaints about against them. And it's basically the idea that people think, in my opinion, people people are buying stuff and they just don't realize how computers work and they think they're overpaying for them. And then they demand more from, from the company just because the thing's pricey. But the reality of it is that you can't really like there's not much that you can do there they do like most companies seem to try to do their best and then i guess people kind of ruin it by complaining too much and that's why you get such shitty customer service to be honest but stuff it is what it is just keep your eyes out for it you just don't want to buy something that's just not working that's that's totally understandable if it's not up to your quality as well just send the thing back try to get your refund as fast as you can whatever you can do if you just don't like it just realize what you're getting in before you get this and this is going to be something like a certified refurbished computer you may want to make sure that you're not going to get burned on it and then just when you get it just make sure it works entirely check the heat check if there's anything wrong with the screen that you don't like just realize you can replace the screen that's not that difficult you can buy a replacement screen on ebay for the most part um you can still do that so you don't need to buy the most high-end of screens the one that i mentioned does come with an ips screen most of the time check what what you're buying these computers change they're just they're computers that other people sent back or computers they had on the side there's only going to be one or two of them at best and then they sell out and then later on they get new ones keep checking you might get the one that you want buy it if you do like it and then check 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 that computer before you start using it and you start make customizing it to your liking because you may not be able to keep that computer because it might have a problem anyways again if you want something different you don't want to go with alienware fine go ahead and buy something else but just realize it reselling is going to be much more difficult for some reason and other things like that just the build quality isn't necessarily gonna sell people either i don't know if if people really prefer the build quality of other computers but if they do go ahead and buy those as well just realize if you're buying something with a 1060 it's good for this year it may be good for next year but it may not be good after that with, with a 1070 you may get three years but again come next year when laptops with multiple cores more than four cores comes out your laptop's gonna look not as interesting anymore just be aware that that's what you're buying. You're buying something that's good for now, and it may not be good for tomorrow. Guys, I'm signing out. I hope this video was helpful. See you next video. Bye, guys.